Welcome, viewers. We are back here in the monster arena. I took the liberty of catching 10 of every creature in the Calmlands, Makalania, and the Thunder Plains. Just to kind of get those out of the way now. Now, before moving on, I've got a couple things to show off. First off, note my gill count. 672,000. That is more than enough than what I need to uh, do to get a special thing in a little bit. Oren reached the end of his sphere grid and I had him hop over to Titus using the front sphere. So now Oren is going through Titus's sphere grid and will get all of those delicious, delicious speed boosts. Also, he'll learn Haste Daga, which means that'll be nice. More people can cast Haste. Of course, Titus is at the end of his sphere grid. If I, have a, if I had a level three unlocker, I would go on and use it to unlock this, which is, I believe, halfway through Unisphere grid? Yes, because there's Kira, but I can wait till later for that. Um, once, ugh, excuse me, once I get the thing from the sunken cave, and by the way, I'm going to be saving all of the monster hunting for off screen, because that's going to take a fucking long ass time, but once I get the special thing from the sunken cave, I will be able to have Titus jump all the way over to Oren's Sphere Grid. To the beginning of Oren's Sphere Grid at that, wherever the fuck it is. Here it is. Have him jump all the way over here to Power Break, and he can start going through Oren's Sphere Grid, which will be nice as well. Uh, Waka's starting to get to the end of his Sphere Grid, just, uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Looks like seven levels before he gets triple foul. And that'll be the end of his sphere grid with another level three lock block in our path. And no one else is really leveled up because like I said, I'm not gonna really bother taking the time to level each character up while I'm running around capturing one of each enemy. So we have captured 10 of every enemy in the Calmlands, which was the first quest this guy wanted us to do. Actually, he just wanted us to catch one of every enemy in the Calmlands. And as a token of his appreciation, he gives us a treasure chest that we can't open. That treasure chest contains Yuna's ultimate weapon. All right, so, He's been researching the specimens that we brought from the Calmlands and created a really nasty beast. We get 60 far plane winds. You really want to do this now just so you can pick up those 60 far plane winds. And let's check out this nasty beast that he was talking about. It can't possibly be as hard as he was talking about. I mean, it's just a chimera. Uh, Chimera Aegist, apparently. It can't be, it can't possibly be that hard. Or it possibly can. Megado Flame. Let's see how much this does. Ow! <laughs> that had to fucking hurt. So yeah, these super beasts, don't really expect to beat them your first playthrough, or hell, even your fifth playthrough. Until you unlock a special beast later on, called the Don Tonberry, you're really not going to have much of any use for fighting them. Alright, before doing that, let's quickly go into customization, and I'm going to put this on Titus's Taming Sword. So, what do those 60 far plane winds do? It gives us Death Strike. This is going to make capturing enemies a lot fucking easier. Death Strike almost guaranteed to go off, and it causes instant death. Yes, sure, some enemies are immune to instant kill, but for the most part, they aren't. Which means 
a lot of the flan enemies we can now one shot with death strike it is really fucking nice to have heal up talk to him again he's been researching the specimens we brought from the flat uh, thunder planes we get 99 chocobo wings this viewers is really nice and why I wanted to take care of getting all the enemies in the choke and not the chocobo wings and the thunder planes chocobo wings can be customized onto armor for auto haste bring it on let's see what I'm gonna get fucked up by it's just a cactar that is using 99,999 needles and it does that damage. It is guaranteed to one shot, even at maximum health. Like I said, yeah, you're pretty much not gonna have a goddamn chance in hell with beating these enemies. And like Cactars, these guys got really high of aid. Now what's kind of cool that I actually like about this game and other games that have cactars in it that have their attacks animated, they actually shoot out 10,000, 99,999, 100 needles, whatever the quantifiable amount is. Alright, he's been researching the specimens from the Makalania planes. We get 60 shining gems. Yeah, let's go on and check it out. And this enemy is a updated version of this asshole. This asshole has regen. I don't like it. Well, while I have the chance to, may as well use a slice and dice to advance Titus's uh, overdrive. This is the one good thing about these super fights. The enemies pretty much will deal mass amounts of damage to you. Unfortunately, these guy, that guy does instant kill, so it doesn't charge up the overdrive, but if it does mass amounts of damage to you, you're pretty well much guaranteed to have your lim uh, overdrive gauge just filled up. Anything else? Why, yes, created a monster. Fabulous day. We get 63 stars. That's nice to have, I think. If I remember right, three stars can be used to... Ooh... Well... <laughs> if I remember right, three stars can be used to customize overdrive to AP or triple overdrive. Or maybe it's triple AP. Let's find out. Echo bracers... It would be all the way at the bottom. Nope, break damage limit. Or break MP limit. Still nice to have. And that's everything. So let's check out the monster arena. As you can see, we've got areas from for every place in existence that we can visit at this point. The sunken cave will be the next place I go to get the stuff. Beaconel we can't do for a little while, same with the rest of these. I can technically capture enemies for, I believe, the Jose Road, because it's technically a part of the Moonflow, or the Moonflow is technically a part of Jose Road, but I won't be able to catch the maximum amount of every creature on Jose Road. So let's check this out. Ten of every enemy in the Thunder Plains. 10 of every enemy in Makalania, and 10 of every enemy in the Calmlands. That's pretty nice. Now, a quick special thing of note, whenever you unlock a new super enemy, it will be listed under Area Conquest, Monster Conquest, or Original. Area Conquest, we've only unlocked three so far, and these super battles do cost quite a bit of money. The Cactar King. The originals also cost quite a bit of money, and these are basically boss, super boss enemies. And we don't have it unlocked yet, but that's basically super versions of each enemy. So yeah, that was nice to 
point out, the cloud of mem mirror seems to react. But nothing happens. Yep. Well, I think it's time for us to head on back to Makalania Woods. Because there's something we can actually do about that clouded mirror. Now, the reason why I wanted to grind up to 60, not 60, 600,000, I think it would be about 600,000, uh, 615,000 or so money, gill, whatever you want to call it. I think it's that about that amount that you want to have when going into the sunken cave, because the secret Aeon that you pick up from in there will give you s two special things if you give him three times the amount of money he asks for. You can whittle him down to 200,000 or so in the gill count to get him, and then when you triple it, he'll give you two teleport spheres, which I will be immediately using to teleport Titus over to Orin's level grid. So yeah, that's just something to uh, keep in mind. It no may seem wait. like a massive waste of money to start off with, but... There is an, also an ulterior motive that I want to do, or that I want, or that I have with giving him three times the amount of money that he is asking for. This secret Aeon has no overdrives, but he does have a special attack that is dependent on a few variables, and you can raise it depending on what his hidden affection level is for you. That... And, uh... That can be brought up by basically... I'm not quite sure how much it brings it up, but it can be brought up by giving him three times the amount of money he asks for. I personally won't be using him all that much, at least not until much, much later in the game. I'll do all of my affection rating grinding off-screen. But that's just more stuff that I gotta do. Now, for the time being, I'm not going to bother changing out my party members just that way I can get through these battles quickly, because really, let's face it, I'm killing these guys in one shot anyways. Once I start moving on with the game, however, I will then start changing up my party members and getting everyone their experience. Now, I did miss a cutscene in the last recording session that I accidentally activated, but oh well, y'all can deal with it. It was just a father of one of the temples coming up and going, oh hey, by the way, your traitors who killed Maester Keenock. Which of course we know is bullshit. Now, for the time being, I'm going to keep my usual weapons on my guys, mostly because it'll help, or it'll make plowing through these enemies much quicker. Oh, you know what? I forgot to show off other stuff. Uh, Echo Bracer. Uh, lightning Gems. Ah, there it is. Auto haste. It takes 80 chocobo wings, but it's really nice to have. I will be customizing my own ultimate armor later on, and pretty much everybody is going to have auto haste. And auto